In exposing Islam, I have erred on the side of the Quran and Hadith. That is to say, I have been nearly as repetitious as they have been. By bringing the doctrine's most holy books together chronologically and placing them in the context of time and place, the evidence piles up one confession at a time. The truth ultimately becomes undeniable. Therefore, I will continue to present their scriptures as completely as your endurance allows. By observing a constant pattern of behavior, you will be able to render an accurate assessment. In this light, let's dissect the 52nd surah, kiss and cousin to the 56th. Quran 52, verse 1. I call to witness Tur, or Mount Sinai, and a scripture book inscribed, written on a fine parchment scroll unrolled, and the house ever peopled, and the roof raised high, and the sea kept filled. The Islamic spirit is trying to pull a fast one. The house wasn't ever peopled. As you will discover in the source material appendix, there is no archaeological or historical evidence to show that Mecca even existed before the 6th century. Therefore, Islam's foundation is based upon a lie, because without people it would have been impossible to pass on any semblance of Islamic ritual from Abraham to Kusay. Elsewhere in the Quran, we're told that the book was chiseled on memorial tablets, not inscribed on perishable parchment rolls. But that's the least of the Quranic headaches. It claims, as Madhuri confirms, that it was first written before creation, and that it was passed down and maintained in its original form, verbatim. The Quran that you are bent upon belying is unchangeable. It is inscribed in the preserved tablet, which cannot be corrupted in any way. Since the Quranic claims regarding its origin and nature are essential to our understanding, I'd like to explore this matter more completely. Allah's book says of itself, Quran 12, verse 1, These are verses of the Immaculate Book, a clear discourse. Immaculate means perfect, flawless, inerrant. We've already discovered scores of errors, big and small. Quran 12, verse 3, Through the Quran, we narrate the best of histories. Yet it is devoid of history. It doesn't even provide any context. Quran 2, verse 1. This is a book free of doubt. Uh, Well, that's true, but not in the way it was intended. Quran 10, verse 37. This Quran is such a writing that none but Allah could have composed it. It confirms what has been revealed before. Not only would the behavior in the Islamic heaven be illegal in every state save the brothels of Nevada, the Quran contradicts rather than confirms the prior revelation. It says it inspired. What's more, the writing quality is an embarrassment. While lecturing on creation, Allah's prophet professed, All that was going to be written on the memorial tablet before anything else was created. And that is particularly odd, since everything we have read thus far has been fixated on one man's quest for gold and glory. Said another way, the Quran's revelation are temporal, and they only serve Muhammad. The reason I bring this to your attention is to scuttle the Islamic claim that the Quran is a perfect reflection of the original tablet inscribed in heaven. The earliest Quranic writings all differ with each other. They conflict with the present version. Coins from 685 A.D. have inscriptions that don't match today's surahs. The scripture inside the Dome of the Rock, 691 A.D., also varies. Further, the earliest copies of the Quran were written without any vowels, and the diacritical dots that modern Arabic uses to determine what letter is intended. It wasn't until the late 8th century, more than 150 years after Muhammad's death, that Islamic scholars added the diacritical marks to clear up countless ambiguities. In so doing, they chose the letters and vowels, and thus the current words, punctuation, and meaning. They translated what was essentially code into the gibberish we are reading today. Then there is the problem of the parchments themselves. The oldest fragments date to the 8th century, not the 7th. 
They were found in a paper grave in the loft rafters of the Mosque of Sharia in 1972. Aberrations from the accepted text abound, including the order of the verses, textual variations, and artistic embellishments. Gerd Puen, the leader of the German team analyzing the scrolls, said, Revisions are very clearly written over earlier, washed-off versions. What the Yemeni Quran suggests is an evolving text, rather than the Word of God revealed in its entirety to the Prophet Muhammad. Puen went on to declare, The Quran claims for itself that it is mubin, or clear. If you look at it, you will notice that every fifth sentence or so doesn't make any sense. A fifth of the Quranic text is incomprehensible. This is what has caused the anxiety regarding translation. If the Quran is not comprehensible, if it can't even be understood in Arabic, then it's not translatable into any language. This stark reality is frightening to Orthodox Muslims who parrot the Prophet's claim that the Quran has been preserved perfectly, unchanged and inerrant, just as Allah wrote it. The perfection claim Allah makes on behalf of his Quran would be impossible even if Allah were God. Language is an imperfect tool. One word can mean many things, and meanings often change with inflection. Connotation is altered by context, something the Quran lacks. Knowing the time, place, and parties to a conversation is required to establish the intended implication. For example, the classical Arabic word used for fighting could just as easily be translated killing. And the word for virgin is indistinguishable from the classic Arabic word for white grape. Yahweh knew better. He never said his scripture was inerrant. He said it was sufficient. But while we're on the subject, I'd like to share something you might find interesting. There are a thousand prophecies in the Bible, most of which are exacting. There have been no misses. There are thousands of detailed historical depictions in the text, none of which has ever been shown to be invalid. The Quran's obsession with demented torments is proof of a different kind of inspiration, its fixation on fatalism, the annihilation of choice, and therefore the impossibility of love, provides another salient clue as to the nature of Islam's dark spirit. 